Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. No. All right. So today we're going to talk about sections. So. So if we have an object like this, and we won't like, line it up. So I have this. You really can't see a lot about it, right? All you can see is just a basic outline of the shape. So what's going on inside this thing? If I show you that, can you see what's going on? That, can you see a lot of it? Yeah. Yeah. You see more. But if I show you that, you can see a little bit better of what's going on. You got some, some, uh, some veins here, some section, impeller kind of thing. So normally this would just be all hidden lines, right? Yeah. Hidden lines are good. They can kind of show you what's going on. But if you have a lot of hidden lines, it all gets confusing. Especially with this, you'd have a lot of different hidden lines inside because you have a lot of different channels inside. <clears throat> also, when we get to dimensioning, you can't dimension hidden lines. So it's kind of useless. So by doing sections, now you can see the inside. They become visible lines. And now you can see them easier because you don't have all the other hidden lines. But also, now you can dimension to them. Okay? So it's like we're cutting the part in half or wherever we're cutting it. <laughs> Whatever is solid where we cut, we get these hash lines, section lines. And then all those edges become visible. Any hidden lines are behind it, we just leave off. All we care about is what's there on the cut. Okay? Just, on the cut. just what's there at the cut point. And then also visible things that are beyond it. Okay? Questions? Yes. Oh. yes. We'll talk a lot more about it. <clears throat> so, kind of the same example. This is the same thing with hidden lines and visible and as a section. What do you notice about this drawing? So what can you, that's over there. What are all these hidden lines? What's this hidden line out here? No, it's not center line. That one on the left side. It's the rear. On section, isn't it that part? Spread out a little bit more. Yeah, it's this piece right here, right? It's not as easy to see that because it does that stop there, or does it keep going? Here you can see definitely that it's this piece here. And it goes around, it's the same as that piece over here. So you, you, it's a, that expanded internal part, so yeah. why is that line, that, why is the hidden line go all the way? Why would they cut it? It does. No, why does it? Why it does don't it? go all the way around. There it does. It's got a, a T slot to cut around. So it's a hole with a, a wider slot here. So they can put it like a T nut or something in, move it around, and tighten it down. <clears throat> but here we can see that a lot better than with all the hidden lines. What about the front view? What's, what's different about that that you haven't seen before? Okay, that you have, uh, we haven't seen yet in this class. In, in this view, what's different there? Cutting plane line. This one right here. It's cutting plane line tells us where we're going to cut it. That's showing us where we're cutting. So we dealt with that 4A one once when we draw. A little bit. Yeah. So where, which one of these is correct? Uh, if I'm 
pinny knit right through the middle there. Which one of those is correct? Is, is B correct? B shows me where we're cutting through, but it it's forgot about the stuff that's past it. Because the arrows are transferred to where we're looking, <clears throat> so we're not seeing any of the edges that are beyond the cut. So B's. What about C? B, no, it's showing hidden. Yeah, C, because it's showing hidden lines behind it. We're trying to make it clearer, so we're going to take that off. Well, D. No. Yeah, they didn't convert them back to head lines, or back to visible lines, right? So A and E. The movie channel. <laughs> Drama, whatever. I don't know what A and E is. What's the difference between A and E? <laughs> yeah, the direction, right? Yeah. On A, they're all going the same direction. On E, they're, not. they're going two different directions. Which one's correct? A. 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 Why is E wrong? Because they're going different directions. Yeah, I'm curious. <coughs> what does different directions mean? They cut two different ways. They mean it's different material. Different materials or. Different pieces. Different pieces. <clears throat> so in assemblies, we can do sectioned assemblies when we get to that. Use different hatch directions and different patterns to show different materials. So if I look at this, I think that that's one part and that's a different part. Uh, Not that it's the same part. I thought you used different hatch line type line type to show. Well, the, the line material. type is for material, but <laughs> we'll use this one a lot, and that's I think the next slide. But even if it's the same material. We'll do different angles to show different parts. Okay. So, the different patterns. <clears throat> so, this one is ANSI 31. And it's our multi purpose, just generic hatch pattern. 99% of the time, that's what you use. You can also, if you wanted to show specific materials, you could use different ones based on the materials. So, if I was drawing this assembly hatched, I'd use steel for this outside. Actually, that's aluminum. So, I'd use aluminum for the outside, which that would be this. And then for the inside, I'd use that for the, for the bushing. Just to show that it's two, two different materials. And I'd probably change the angle on one of them so they're going different directions. Just, for just, just to give it extra clarity. <coughs> so, um, now okay, I'll do most of these by itself. It has an earth one, has sand. It doesn't have wood grain. Why would we want to put the wood grain pattern, hash pattern, or something? Well, that'd be important. What? It's made out of wood. Yeah, it's made out of wood. But there's two different types of hash patterns for those. And both of these you have to draw yourself. Don't do it either automatically. But why might you? Why would you want to? Besides, it just if you're doing a section of something, it would. Uh, well, it matter if it was I say a veneer or if it was a leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would if you want the end grain to show the bottom, was, because some the things leg, you made with grain going one way, and some things you made with grain going the other. Yeah, the, the direction of grain matters in the strength. Also, even if you, you can do that, even in not a section. So, like I was, I was drawing these tables.
do something like that. Just in the just in the top view. Why? Isn't that how the grain's laid out on these tables? Direction of the grain. It would look kind of bad if one of these pieces the grain was going up and down instead of across, right? It just wouldn't match. So the aesthetics of it all. They'll do that to make sure that when they're cutting out the pieces, they cut it with the grain going the right way. So questions? <clears throat> Some of these patterns in AutoCAD, like the, the concrete, the sand, they're used on larger things usually. So if you do it on something small, you have to scale it down a lot. If you do any of these on something that's metric, you're going to have to scale it up a lot. So like if you're going to use the ANSI 31 on a metric drawing, what are you going to need to put as your scale? How many milliliters per inch? Twenty-five point four millimeters to the one inch. Memorize that. It will be on the final. I guarantee it. Really? Guarantee it. You need to memorize that. So if you're gonna do a hatch on a drawing this metric, what scale should you use on your hatch pattern? Twenty-five point four. We're around twenty-five. You don't need to be exact because it doesn't being exact doesn't matter. But in order to get it to the right size, somewhere between 20 and 30 will give you a good size. Okay. <clears throat> so the cutting plane that we just we showed you the line. Which way it goes tells you which way you're looking. So here. section through it here, I'm basically cutting this side of it off, right? Makes sense? And then so I put the view down here, because for the front view, you'd be looking from here, okay. now we're looking from here. And we're just taking that front piece off of it, okay? Same thing here, right? It here. So now instead of the top view looking from here, it's looking from here. Why isn't that hatched? Yeah, because it's this face down here, right? Is that on the cutting line? No, it's below, right? So because it's not solid here, we're not going to show anything. It would have to be another section. Yeah, or, or not yeah, at all. It, you're just not going to show it. Why isn't there a line right here? Yeah, because it's tangent down there, right? So we just have the center line. Here's we can do two sections, so you can have more than one section on a part. Why isn't this section up here? Because shouldn't it be that way? Shouldn't if A is going down, shouldn't it be B going this way? Different. It, 
What was that? But why isn't it lined up? Yeah, because remember the side view here and the side view here, it's the same exact thing. So put it where it looks better. So it doesn't really matter. It could be here, it could be up there. Either way, it, it's the same. Okay. Any questions on this? Look at this right here. Solid line inside, dashed line outside. What what is that? Because you're not on the bottom. Because your cut doesn't intersect it. What do you look like? It looks like you have a gap in the middle. Look at the sections. The bottom of the slot is wider than the inside of the cut. So that's what that's sort of, the top is, is thinner than the bottom. So I get upside down counterboard, but now it's a slot instead of a hole. So the cutting plane line is either a phantom line, so either a phantom line type or a hidden line type, but it's thick. So, so far we have two Thick lines, you have object lines that are thick, and cutting plane lines that are thick. I don't think there's a cutting plane line in your template, so you're going to have to make it. You're going to have to make a layer for it. How can we get those arrowheads? Uh, polyline. Polyline. You can use polyline to draw them. What's another easy way? Uh, we didn't you know any commands that make arrowheads for you? Dimensions. Draw a dimension, explode it, steal the arrowhead. What's the optic line? The object layer? The visible lines? The outside lines? No. The, the, oh, you, oh, I thought you said optic. Line. No. Object. <clears throat> Which one of those is correct? A, B, or C? Is B correct, yes or no? No. no. What's wrong with B? The hatch is in the wrong direction. What was that? The hatch is in the wrong direction. What do you mean the hatch is in the wrong direction? Huh? The, the direction of the hatch doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Well, it's still wrong. It's, something's wrong with it. What's, what is, what's wrong with it? The section view should always be on the opposite side of the arrows. So what's wrong? Is, it, is the position wrong or is the arrow wrong? Either. No, not either. Well, yeah. It's either one or the other. Because yeah. C has the opposite problem. Because C is the same thing. It's on the same side that the arrow is pointing to. B and C have the opposite problem. Yeah, A is the correct one. But what's wrong with B? Position, right? Look at the part. It's reversed. This is a saw line. We have that's this corner here that would be hidden, right? So this view should go to that side. What about C? What's wrong with C? The arrows. Because it's got the correct orientation for the view. So yeah, A is correct. The view is in the correct orientation, and the arrows are pointing the right way. Okay, questions?
So that was what we call a full section. We cut the whole part in half. A half section, we're only taking half of the view off. Okay? So things that are similar, the same on both sides, we can do a half section and get something like that. What's the benefit of doing a half section? Take one drawing time. Well, you're still drawing, right? But no, you're still drawing the whole thing, though. It's just a decision. The what? It gives you the ability to see pretty much everything that's all together. But I could have seen that just from here, right? What, is, what does a half section give me that a full section doesn't? What do I get on that side that I don't get on that side? The outside view. The outside, right? For the half section, half of it I get the outside view. Half of it I get the inside view. So also on your, your, your section lines, instead of going straight across, now we're going to come up over and up with arrow, like that. No arrow hit here, because this is where we're, we're just cutting that piece off. Okay? So we get outside on one half, the inside of the other. Questions? Yes, no? You guys awake? Well, wake up. <laughs> we also have a broken out section, which is similar to a half section. But now instead of doing exactly half the part, or half section doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but it usually is. Um, a broken out, we're just saying in one place, we want to see a section. So here, we just all we care about is this little piece right here. Care about what the, the angle of that is for this little hole that goes through. And so there's no, no cutting plane line in this view. All you do is you draw this line. Do you know what it's called? Uh, broken out section line. line. Yeah, the view is a broken out section. But what's this line right here called? We use the spline to draw it, but what's the line called? Breakout's not working, so. <laughs> no. The short break line. Because <clears throat> we're doing, we're just breaking that in piece. It's called a short break. Well, there, there is a long break line also we'll talk about eventually. So that's a short break line. It's just a spline, just kind of wavy. And so that's our third thick line. So object lines, short break lines, and cutting plane lines are three thick lines. Those are the only three lines that should be thick. Everything else is thin. <clears throat> so we just kind of do that whenever we want to see something that, to, to get to it. Okay. Questions? Why would we use the broken out section? Could it be too hard to section the whole piece or something just small? Yeah, we don't want to section the whole thing. Or we really care about just one small piece of it. It's like, if we're doing it, this is the only place where we can dimension that angle. So instead of having to section the whole, the whole part, we just do this and now we can dimension that angle. So it's mainly to, to clarify it so you can get a dimension in there, so like that. Okay. Questions? So the revolve section is we're just taking where we're cutting it and we're turning it in place. So we're just kind of cutting it and turning it in place where we what that profile is. Okay. So questions on any of these? So you can see on this wrench, this part of the wrench is square. This part is hexagon, this part is a circle, and the jaw right here 
the square or sharp corners on the inside and radius on the outside. Why doesn't this straight line right here follow the curve? Because it's the part of the wall. When you turned it, it was still flat. Yeah, because this this back this flange here going back is straight. So when I turn it, it's still straight. So what you're doing is just wherever that center line is, you're just turning it right there. So we're cutting it here and turning it flat. Okay? Does that make sense? So I had a piece like that. And I want to do a, a revolve section right there. What I do is I pick where I want my center line to be. So I'm going to say I'm going to do a, my revolve section right there. And so at that spot, that gives me my height. I'm going to take all my depths and stuff from here so then I'd get that. So if I cut it here, it'd be taller. Cut it here, it'd be shorter. See how that works? And so I can either do it there, or I can do my short break lines here also, and erase to give myself some space. If this was in the middle of a long beam, what's what's a, a problem with it? Or this? Why would you not want to do that? Unnecessary. Now, so from the side view, I'd, it'd be all headlines, right? So this flange being bigger. But I, I want to see that cross section. Or let's see this one. Would it be better to put that maybe somewhere else instead of right there? You're going to leave that view circular and then take that. section here, we're going to be doing just doing like that, and then having the section there. <coughs> Do you think that might be a little clearer than having it here on the curve? Maybe? Uh, much better. 
Well, if you had it on the curve, it shows its relationship to the larger object. So, but here you've got your section line, and there you have your section. So it could be either way, depending on how many things you're doing and how big of a thing you're cutting. So like this is a pretty easy thing. But if you're doing something that's So that we can't we can't do a revolve section for that. So in that case, we do a remove section where we draw our section line like I just did here. We just draw a section line. We pull it out of the drawing or out of the view. So we do a section lines. We put sections somewhere else, either somewhere else on that same page, or all these sections could go on a, to another page also. So remember I said that you can get more than six views on a drawing. This is an easy way to do it. If you have to do a lot of sections for something, you can get a lot of views real quick. Yeah, that, uh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's a good so way you, you couldn't it. rotate all these right on top of each other because it all overlap. So things that are changing shape, uh, freeform curves kind of things, you have to do a lot of sections to see how it's going to look. <clears throat> kind of like if you're doing like an architect, if they're doing a, a skyscraper, they'd have a, a drawing for each floor. Those are basically sections that are removed. So, questions? We could also do a view you know, like this. Or just Or if we can just do an arrow like that. So now we can get an outside view move somewhere else. So if I want to do a left view, but I didn't have enough space for a left view, I could do this. One arrow I'm doing just, we're doing the whole view. If I do it like this, look at just that area. Or I could do like if I only cared about looking at these two little ribs. I can do it like that. And I can do a, a top view of just those two pieces and not do the whole rest of the view. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And the letter H tells me what? The, what section letter it is. So section AA Section BB. Oh, and you're CC picking H. Because that's the next one. And then when I drew that, I do that. And this right here, should that be a solid line? All right, that's not an edge. I don't have an actual edge right there. So that should actually. Be what we call a long break line. I'm going to do a straight line. And that little heart monitor thing. And that does a long break. So that means that there's a lot of stuff outside, but we're not showing it, we're only showing that little piece. Okay? And then you would do like this one, you do that that section, and then yeah. you'd have the uh, little yeah. out view. Or instead of saying section, I might, I might say view. That's not really a section. So I'd say view. Like that. <clears throat> and that can go on the same page, go to another page, whatever. Yeah. Why is the section D slash D or E slash E or F slash F? Because it's from the letters A A B B C C. It can be on both sides of that. Cut out. Yeah, we have a section that goes from C to D. Yeah. 
Um, I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So, other questions? No. When I get to the aligned section. So, offset sections is just like removed, but now we're not going in a straight line. We're going to come down, move it over a little bit so we can get through another hole also. Okay? Cut here, we're going to cut here, move over, cut, move over, cut again. Do I show anything for right there in my section? I just, my hatch, do, I don't show an edge though or anything, right? So there's no edge sticking here from where I made that jog. What do you notice about the position of those jogs? Yeah, they're, they're between holes. What else about them? They're in the center. They're in between things that you want to see. Yeah, there, there were two things I want to see, but what else? What about where they are? The location of where they are? And, and, or how they're shaped? They're straight. They're perpendicular, right? They come down, they go straight over. They don't go at an angle or anything. And what else? What about, why, why, is that, why don't I do it like right here? Or didn't you have to show that? What was that? Yeah, then I can. So right here, I'm kind of picking an area that's kind of flat. It's a flat, big flat area. I'll do them in there. I don't want to do it anywhere that's changing elevation or anything. Okay? So kind of pick flat spots. It could be like here, right? But that's trying to get that line real close in there. Better do it there, same effect, but it's easier to see where that section line is. So, any questions? No. <clears throat> when we do webs, so webs are thin pieces for support, right? If I section a web like AA, which of these is correct? Is that correct or is that correct? Well, yeah. This one is the correct one. This is what it actually is if you cut it in half. It would actually be solid all the way down, right? So it will be like that if you actually cut it. But convention says you draw it like this. And why? Exactly. Why do we draw it like this, not like it truly is? Clarity. Yeah, clarity. Here you think, oh, that's a big chunk, right? But it's not. Really, all of that is empty. It's only right there in the middle that it's got the full width. Also, which direction does that web give it strength? Does it give any strength going side to side? Yeah, no, like, if this is the web, no strength this way, right? A lot of strength going up and down, right? So go side to side, no strength, rock and show it. When we cut it through here, BB, now we show it section. Because now that's the direction that it's giving support. Okay? And it, in BB, it really does go that full distance, right? It, it's all the way from the top to the bottom. <coughs> how do we know how far out that line should be? How do they know where to put that line? Yeah, if we project it. So if I do my minor line, right? And then if I come from here, over to here, up, and over. That's where I get it. Oh, okay. You've got 45. Sorry. Right, from wherever I pick my section. So the section was up here, and cut it back here somewhere. The section line was down here, it'd be up here more. Okay? 
So wherever that section line is, kind of plane line, that's where we project over and up to, to show where it is. Now, when you're picking where B, the section line for B is going to sit. It doesn't matter where it is. Just as long as it shows everything properly. Mm -hmm. So it could be somewhere between here and here. You probably wouldn't want it up too far where it's all the way back, or too low where it's all the way out, and then somewhere in the middle. But in there somewhere, it doesn't matter. As long as wherever you pick it, that's where you project it. Questions? Any questions? No? Okay, so if we have a line sections. <clears throat> if we cut, it's like an offset section where it normally would cut straight through it, right? If we cut straight through this, what would the side look like? How would this little tab, would it, would it look like that? No, it would be foreshortened, no, right? Would it be seen it from a little angle? Would it be easy to draw that way? Would it be kind of a pain? Would it be helpful? No. So what we do is we align it, so we come down, and we go at an angle through that, that leg. So we come down, so it's just like our offset section, but now we're coming down and going like that. Yeah. Yeah, so just like this, where we went down and over a little bit. But now we can't, because of an offset section, we can still just project that straight, right? With this one, what we're doing is now whatever these distances are, we're going to take it and rotate it down and then bring it across. So. Like the outside there. What a clever tool. Bring that out. And then we can come from there, over to there, from that point over to there, to get the length of it here. Okay? This, this looks at it kind of, so that way we're looking straight like at that, but over there. This makes it so it's easier to see, right? See that? Same thing over here. We come down here and over there. We can get that. So, um, back to Richard's question about if you would ever, ever might have two different letters. So if let's say that part was like that, I could have another section line out here, so this could be A, B, C. So I could have section A, B, and, and section A, C. So that, that's where you could possibly have two different letters. But usually it's going to be the same letter. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever seen that done on an actual drawing, um, but it could be because we could also just do A B. C C right like that, or do an auxiliary view of just that. So there's lots of different ways we could get that that same thing without having to do a whole another section.
Questions? Alright, I think we're getting pretty close to it. Um, ribs are just, and circular ribs are just like ribs for straight things. But now our section line is really going to have to do a lot of work. We've got a rib here. Our section line is going to come down. Then this little piece is going to kind of travel around, go through that rib, go down, go up, and out. So we want to section through the rib so we can have the, the rib here. And why didn't it go through this rib? Why did it go here instead of here? <coughs> well, that looks like it might be the shortest path to that the hole over there. Same distance. Why go this way instead of that way? Doesn't matter. What? What's this, this thing here, right? What's that thing called? Keyway. So this, this keyway right here, we wanted to show that. So that's why we came this way. What's a keyway for? Put the key in. What's a key do? A key shims it. The lock brown pin onto your center shaft so it doesn't fly off. Not so it doesn't fly off. So it doesn't turn separately, right? So you'd have your your shaft in here with a keyway also. Then you have a key. So the key locks the shaft and the hub. So they rotate at the same rate. Okay? That's what the QA is for. That's kind of an important thing. So we always want to show where that QA is. Questions? Uh, spokes, same thing as ribs. Here we did a revolve section there. Here we don't show it. We show it a line, but we don't section the spoke. If we looked at this and this was sectioned, what would you think? It was all the way around, right? Yeah. Do they do that? Do they have them where it's all the way around? Yeah. yeah. Or if it was just small cutouts, there's a, a point somewhere here where it becomes not spokes, but cutouts. So just if this was a little bit wider like that, or like that, somewhere in here you decide, okay, now I'm going to section it because it's more solid than it is open. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about short break lines. So we can do short break lines around revolve sections. If we have round things though, we use what's called an S-break. See it right here? And so, how do you draw that? You do this flying, that, that's one way. Um, there's, if you look in the, the drafting books, there's a big, is it a big thing on formulas for the radiuses of everything? I don't know anyone that actually uses that. So if, I, so if I've got a one inch opening here, Like that. 
just somewhere in there, and then you just mirror it up. You get the other one go in the same direction, and you mirror this one across. And you could trim it off first and then do the mirrors. Like that. And then if you're doing pipe, Radiuses, I don't know. I'm just going to pick two points to kind of set a little radius. And there I go. No one really cares exactly what that looks like. Then no one's going to measure and go, if you're off by this <laughs> way. As long as you get the idea. If you can do it quick, your boss is even more impressed than if you make it right. Even when you do it by hand. I've never actually measured it out. Okay, use a circle template to do the same thing. Okay. So questions? So um, the lab or the practices this week is twenty or six dash twenty. So on this one, you're going to do a half section. Turn this view into a half section. Don't don't go by what the the sections here. Doing a two full sections is kind of pointless, right? It's logical. It's going to be the same thing. Just do a half section on this view. Okay. Wow. What? What was that? Okay. Um, and on this one. 621, you're going to do these offset sections. So you're going to do sections A, A, or they don't have section lines on them. But you're going to do that section, that section, that section. When you do it, make sure you label your sections. And these, the letters for the hole sizes. Gives you both the X and the Y position of the hole. Yeah, then the diameter. Where is the origin for this? Good question. Where's the origin? Bottom left. Bottom left. How do we know it's bottom left? Because it shows X and Y. Oh, yeah, because it says X and Y. Even if it didn't say that, if you look at the A and B holes, look at the numbers, B is lower and further to the left than A. So that will tell you that it's down here also. Okay. Questions? So on this one, where might you want to start this on your drawing? Should you just start it anywhere in space? It doesn't, doesn't hurt, but if you start this on the actual origin of AutoCAD, and then for these these holes, you just put an absolute coordinates, right? It'd be a little easier than having to offset to find out. Yeah. Questions? Comments? Cool. All right. Get that lock, please. Uh, the 